Spring has finally sprung its springiness where I live. Plants are awake after months of sleep. We had a record cold winter here with record high snowfall. It's a miracle plants survive the conditions they do, but today we're going to be exploring how they do this through the majesty of Banjo-Kazooie's Click Clock Wood. We will be discussing how plants change throughout the seasons and what tactics they use to survive. When you first enter, you're greeted with a light rain and fresh green grass. I imagine it probably has that spring smell there, which, if you're wondering, is caused by bacteria producing a compound called geosmin. There are all sorts of plants waiting for banjo, including this Dianea-like plant waiting for a snack. At this time of the year, real Dianea are waking up from their winter naps. They go dormant during the fall due to the cold temperatures of the Carolinas in the United States. They're starting to send out their spring traps, and sometimes a flower. This flower stalk is incredibly tall compared to the rest of the plant. This is so it doesn't accidentally eat a pollinator. Most of them fly well above the traps. Also, note how the flower and trap are different colors. This could be to attract different insects. Over here we have a hole in the ground. If Banjo and Kazooie spit some eggs into the hole, a uh, plant grows? Well, that's not how eggs work, but all seeds did start off as eggs. Just like animals, plants have egg cells hidden away in ovaries. These eggs then germinate into this very large flower bud. It isn't blooming quite yet. It appears to still be too early in the season for it. We're also greeted by the centerpiece of the level, a massive tree. Right now it's just starting to wake up. Trees store the sugars they make throughout the summer in their roots during the winter time. They do this so that they're better protected from the cold. If there were to be a late or early freeze while the sugars and water are still at the top of the tree, then it can cause frost cracking in the bark. Right about now, the tree is starting to send up the sugars and some water to the top of the tree so it can begin its flowering. In the spring, you'll notice many trees are actually flowering before they send out their leaves. There's a few benefits to doing this. First, having flowers out with no leaves makes it easier for the pollinators to find them. Second, if they're wind pollinated, then they won't have any obstruction from the leaves. Third, it extends the time the fruit has to mature. Flowering uses up most of the energy left over from the last year, meaning the plant can spend the rest of the growing season producing fruit and storing more energy for next year's blooms. You'll also notice that the leaves aren't quite out on this tree. Right now they're in their bud stage. In the springtime, these buds will swell as the leaves begin to grow inside of them. These here are lateral buds, meaning they aren't on the tip of the branch, but instead grow out of the sides. In this part of the tree, under the bark, you'll see annular rings. These are the rings that tell how old the tree is. I'm guessing you've counted them before in a stump you found. It's very fun. The lighter rings are the spring and early summer growth, where the darker rings are the late summer and fall growth. You can see the darker rings are much smaller than the pale ones. You'll also notice that this dark green is in the wood. This is actually a branch, or was one. It might not have broken out of the bark yet, so right now deep in the wood it's called a knot. Why is there a Dianea in the tree? Dianea aren't epiphytes, meaning they don't grow on trees. I guess the game devs just needed some sort of obstacle up here. Okay, now on to summertime. The grass is starting to yellow, which is pretty common for this time of year. Water's more scarce, meaning the grass must conserve it in the root systems. The intense heat can dry them out fairly easily, too. They choose to go dormant in this time of the year to save themselves. You'll also see a camel friend from a previous level in front of the flower. If you give the flower some water from the camel, then it'll grow taller. It still isn't blooming yet, but it will soon. Trust me. Back to our big tree friend, he finally has his leaves. They appear to be oak leaves, just judging by the shape and the leaf margins. Right now, it's in full photosynthesis mode. It will pump out sugars constantly and store them in the roots for the upcoming winter. It's also constantly growing taller and wider. This is where those annular rings come from. Fruit is also starting to form. The flowers from spring get pollinated and turn into many different kinds of fruits and nuts. Everything from peaches to acorns are growing throughout the season. Some return in the height of summer while others won't be ready until the fall. 
Speaking of fall, there's a slight chill in the air and the ground is covered in leaves. You'll notice that they are yellows and reds instead of the vibrant greens they were before. This is because as light levels and temperatures drop, so do the chlorophylls and plants. This means that the plant will instead have anthocyanins and carotenoids present as the main colors. They actually produce these pigments throughout the entire life of the leaf, but chlorophyll has a very overpowering color too. Flowers blue. I have so many problems with this. There are technically no blue plants in existence. No, we already used that joke in a different video. Blue is a specialized pigment in nature. Plants are incapable of producing this pigment. Instead, they rely on those anthocyanins and carotenoids to be produced at just the right amount and in just the right position so that it creates a blue looking hue. They did get something right with the flower. It has a pistil. This is the female reproductive portion of the flower. I'm guessing this plant is something called dioecious. This means that it has separate male and female flowers on different plants. The opposite is monoecious, which means that both male and female reproductive portions are found on the same plant. In monoecious plants, there are pistils and stamens. The stamens are long stalks called a filament, with the tip being called the anther. This is the part that holds the pollen. The pistil is this vase-like structure. The tip is called the stigma. This is where the pollen lands. This tube is called the style, and it leads to the ovary. Inside the ovary is the ovule with the eggs. All of these are surrounded by petals, which together create the corolla. These green leaf-like structures under the flower are called sepals, and together they make up the calyx. So we can confirm this big tree is an oak. It has acorns, the nut of the oak genus Quercus. We know this by this cute little squirrel who sends us to find some. Nuts are fruits with one seed. They also have a hard outer shell called a pericarp. A lot of things we call nuts aren't actually nuts. Acorns and hazelnuts are, but almonds, peanuts, and pecans aren't. Peanuts are a legume or bean. They're odd in that they mature underground. Almonds and pecans are something called a droop. This is a seed with a very hard pit around it, surrounded by flesh. Now it's time for sleep. Winter's upon us. You can tell by the sleigh bells and the music. A thick blanket of snow covers the ground. This blanket actually protects the plants from the cold. It acts as an insulator, making sure the ground stays slightly warmer, letting the plant roots survive. Those Dionea are asleep for the winter. Their traps have died off. They're now being sustained by a thick rhizome underground. A rhizome is an underground stem that sits parallel with the top of the ground. This structure is responsible for storing energy for the plant for the upcoming spring. Both the roots and the traps sprout from it. Well, our little flower friend didn't survive the cold. I'm guessing she was an annual. You've probably heard the words annual and perennial at your local gardening center. Well, annuals go through their entire life cycle in one year. They sprout, they grow, they bloom, they die. This is also based on climate. For example, where I live in the Midwest, Canaceae are popular gardening plants. But here, unless you dig up the rhizome and store it somewhere over the winter, the plant will die with the cold weather. Perennials, on the other hand, can take years to go through their life cycle. Though, some may flower their first year. They tend to be hardier and survive these cold winters. The massive tree has gone to sleep as well. The leaves have died off and now hang loosely from the tree. This is actually a phenomenon called marcescence. This is where the leaves don't fall from the tree, instead clinging on until new leaves push them off. It's sort of like losing baby teeth. We aren't really sure why they do this though. It's one of the many mysteries of plants. And thus, we have gone full circle in our climate for Click Clockwood. One full year has passed, and all of our plant friends have survived. Plants really are incredible when it comes to survival. And to think, this is just a woodland biome. Plants are found literally everywhere, including the Arctic and Antarctic. It's absolutely insane what they're capable of. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, please like, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, be sure to leave a comment down below. Give me video game and topic ideas. Also, I just like hearing from you guys. If you want more content, you can find me on Twitch at VideoGameBotanist. That's all for now. See you later.